Okay, so in this section we're going to start looking at bipartite graphs. So these are a special family of graphs. Um, it's probably best if you can see it. So here are a series of vertices on the left, and here are a series of vertices on the right. Okay, so this might be uh, A, B, C, and D, and these could be numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4, for example. And then I could connect these by edges. Like so, for example. Okay, so this is a bipartite graph. The word by meaning two and two parts. Okay, so it's a graph that can be separated into a set of vertices on the left and a set of vertices on the right. Two sets, two part, a partition, two sets of vertices that are not actually individually connected to each other. Okay, but two sets such that one set is connected to the other. Okay, it can be separated as such. So these, this is a bipartite graph. Um, and the situations where bipartite graphs can be brought up, or where they are used, is in best allocating a set of workers to a set of jobs, for example. So A, B, C and D might be workers or skilled labourers, for example, and one, two, three, and four might be four tasks that need to be completed. Maybe um, it might be in redecorating a room or something like that. And there are four jobs that need to be done. Um, this could be laying carpet or painting or um, anything like that. So you could say that labourer A or whoever he is, or she, is best at doing task one and task two, okay, or they are skilled in doing those tasks, whereas they are not, A is not skilled in doing three or four, and so will not be doing either of those. C, for example, is only skilled at doing task three, and it is a situation where you have a number of workers, a number of jobs, and you need to allocate the best way of setting up the workers with the jobs. Okay, so that's where um, the algorithm is going to come in in the next video, uh, the next few videos, where we are going to find a way that can allocate these workers to these tasks in the most appropriate way. So this is a bipartite graph. It can also be written down as uh, in matrix form, form um, known as an adjacency matrix. You'll notice there are no weights on the edges. Um, they are nominally of length 1. Um, and you can write this in a matrix. So A, B, C, D, and tasks 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then you can say, well, A is not, A can go to 1 and it can go to 2, but not to 3 or 4. Okay, so 1's representing links, 0 is representing ones that there are no edges there. Okay, I have dropped something. Drop the lid. B is connected to 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, and 4. C is connected to 3 only and D is connected to 2, 3, and 4. Okay, So it may be your job in the exam to go from the graph to an adjacency matrix or from an adjacency matrix to a graph. Okay, And that would probably be a part A of a question. So make sure you're going from one to the other uh, with a bit of practice. Make sure you check as well. Do a double check, because if you make a mistake in that part A for those couple of marks, firstly, you won't get both of the marks, and secondly, it may 
end up ruining your part B, where you actually have to use your graph, okay? So be careful, double check what you're doing here, okay?